Good morning, everyone. It is so good to be back with you. Word of Faith Responds. Thank you again for listening to us. We have been sharing with you our hearts here at Word of Faith Fellowship. The members of our church have been coming on this program and sharing with you uh, their life, really, and just pouring our hearts out and, and just sharing the things that God's done in our lives. And we hope that you've been encouraged uh, by this. It's so good when we share about all the things that Jesus has done in our lives because not only are we just giving honor to God for what he's done, but we also encourage each other. When when we share about the th struggles we've had and God's brought us through, it helps other people as, as they go through struggles. So thank you so much for listening and we hope you're encouraged. Today I have some wonderful people with me today. I have James and Trina Elliott and James actually was born and raised here in Rutherford County, graduated from East High School and went on to college and actually works in the public school systems doing maintenance and thankfully he keeps all those schools in good shape and he does all the plumbing and all the stuff that's tough but it keeps his public schools going and uh, his wife Trina's here and she's a wonderful person Trina came here a little bit after me in 1992 and she teaches at the Word Faith Christian School they have two wonderful children that are so sweet and a, a lot of fun to be with so we're gonna hear some wonderful things from them uh, God has done so much in their lives and they are just they're just so enjoyable to be with because God's touched their lives. And uh, so we're going to just start with James. James, let's go ahead and start from the beginning. You tell us all about your life. Okay. Well, good morning. I'm glad to be here. My name is James Elliott. And uh, I was born and raised in Forest City, North Carolina. And um, I had my dad was uh, Ernest Elliott. He worked at Stonecutter Mill for 33 years. And my mother was a cafeteria worker at the old Dunbar School for about 20-something years. I have two uh, older sisters. Um, my parents, they raised us in church from the time we were babies. Um, and, uh, and when I was growing up, we had a lot of strife, um, in the house and in the church I was raised in. We had a lot of strife. There was a lot of backbiting and, uh, I had a lot of hurts and I had a lot of wounds and I was lonely and empty and that caused me to be withdrawn. And, um, by the time I got in my teenage years, uh, you know, by the time I got in high school, you know, I remember, you know, days I would walk down the hall, my I would hang my head down because I was so wounded and so hurt. By the time I got, you know, to the twelfth grade, God had put me in a class, um, Sandra Norris's math class at East High School. And uh, the one thing I noticed about Sandra Norris, she would always have something good to say. She would always talk about Jesus. She wasn't, she wasn't afraid. She was always bold. Um, and she would ask me to go to church with her to Word of Faith, which is up on 221. And the Word of Faith was a church that Sam and Jane Whaley started um, when Sam went to uh, Oklahoma to teach in a Bible school. Uh, they had somebody else uh, pastor the church. And so uh, that's where Sandra was going. And uh, Sam's wife, Jane Whaley, her parents, Bill and Blanche Brock, that's where they attended church at. And... Uh, God called uh, Sam and Jane to come back here uh, to pastor the church in 1985. And Sam, he still traveled a lot uh, around the world preaching. And, and Jane, she you know, stayed and she, uh, she pastored the church. And when I first met uh, Bill and Blanche, uh, Cassandra Norris, she would always call them Uncle Bill and Aunt Blanche. You got to meet Uncle Bill and Aunt Blanche. Mm -hmm. And so when I first met... <laughs> Met it. They glowed with the love of God. I mean, it, it permeated their their countenance, and uh, you know, God, you know, during that time of my life, God was drawing me towards Him. And uh, you know, after high school, after high school, I went to Isothermal, and uh, Sandra, she would always have some kind of activity at her house, like on Friday night. So she would always invite me over, you know, her children and some other friends. So that's why. You know, I I went, you know, like on Friday nights if I wasn't working. And then, uh, you know, later on I went off to UNC Charlotte and and uh, um, I was working on a degree in uh, electrical engineering. And one day I was, and I would always have a hunger for God in my heart. And uh, when I was study, I would always have my Bible in my backpack because I was so hungry for God. 
a lot of times I couldn't even study. And I just pull out my Bible and start reading my Bible. And one day, I was in my room, and I was studying. And all of a sudden, it hit me, and I physically felt it. The Lord inside of my heart was gone. God had in the process of filling my heart with this love. And so later on, you know, after I got out of college, I enrolled in the Bible school at the Word of Faith Fellowship. And, uh, you know, I realized more and more I had a call of God on my life. And, um, you know, at some point, um, I started working for um, uh, Blanche Broad doing yard work because I had a, a job where I worked on the weekend shift. And uh, it was in 94, her husband Bill, he had he owned a plumbing business, and he needed a helper. So they came and asked me to, if I wanted to be Bill's helper. And so I said yes. And so, you know, at that point, Bill was training me how to be a plumber. Now, this is, uh, you're talking about Bill and Blanche Park. This is uh, Jane Willie's parents. You're talking yes. about the ones you first met at the church. And yes. You felt all the, the love of God from them. Yes. Okay. And uh, so... Um, and, uh, you know, Bill and Blanche, they were a big part of my life. They treated me just like I was their own son. And uh, we we just love, you know, I just love being with them. And I spent a lot of time with them. And uh, one day before, or one year before he passed away, uh, he told me, and this really touched my heart. He said, son, I'll let you go out on your own so you can learn how to do plumbing, you know, for yourself. And that was the year before he died. And that really touched my heart and he had a big part in my life and we loved each other we loved being with each other uh, 92 my wife Trina came to the Word of Faith Fellowship and uh, we became friends and, and later on we got very close and we eventually got married and Bill and Blanche Brock they played a big they were excited and they played a played a big part in our lives in our relationship and uh, they were a part of our wedding and they, you know, they were a part of my family. And Trina, um, he mentioned your name there uh, and uh, <laughs> how God brought you to be his wife and uh, how you came. Would you tell us about your life and how God, you didn't grow up here at uh, Rutherford County. You actually were born far away, West Virginia, is that right? Yes. And tell us about your life. Yes. Well, I, I was born in West Virginia and... My parents were they had a lot of struggles when I was when I was young. So I spent a lot of time with my grandmother and she was a really godly woman. She took me to church with her. I was the went to the senior citizens meetings with her. I was the youngest little citizen senior, senior citizen member in our town and we were just very close and I really loved her and one day she and I were on her porch and we were just having a great day, just a normal day and all of a sudden you know, she just passed out, and you know, I was all alone with her at five years old, and she um, had to be taken to the hospital. I had to actually get a neighbor to come help us, and she had to be taken to the hospital. She had a stroke, and she died, and I never saw her again, and that was very devastating. And um, you know, and, and I, I became very sad at that time, and um, so after my grandmother died, my mother. Um, she she had some struggles but she really loved me and she wanted the best for me and um she had a sister um that i was very close to she was my aunt gloria and my uncle larry and my cousin uh, larry and i loved them and i was very close to them and so my mother wanted the best for me so she allowed me to go and live with them and they took me in to their home and I, I'm, I'm their daughter i called them mom and dad and um they were so good to me and and they would spend hours with me and parting the word of God in, into my heart. And um, one thing in particular that I remember my, my aunt imparting into my heart was the chapter Deuteronomy 28 about, you know, choosing life, choosing to serve God. And if you serve God, you'll have blessings. And if you don't serve God, you'll have curses in your life. And because I still had my, my, my mom and my brother, I would go back and at times to visit over the summer and there was one summer in particular when I was 12 and I I went and I, I stayed with them and I, I really let a lot of the things of the world come into my heart the music and just the way of the world and um, and, it, and it was it was you know it was not good so when I went back um, to go start my school year and be with my 
you know, my Aunt Gloria, my Uncle Larry. Um, God was really just really drawing my heart at this time. And shortly after that, my brother, who I was very close with, he was um, killed. He and his best friend were killed in a car accident. And that was really tough. And um, But when my brother was killed, all those verses that my aunt had imparted to me, they came back about, you know, I saw, I went in my brother's room and I saw all the trophies are here because he was in the sports and he was very popular. All his clothes were still here. And it, it really brought a reality to my heart that, I mean, it's the life and God and things of the spirit are very real. And so that was really a, a landmark in my heart. And um, so as, as time went on, um, my um, aunt and my uncle and my cousin, you know, we all moved to Greenville, South Carolina. And when we moved to Greenville, South Carolina, we went to a church. We were visiting different churches, and we went to a church, and we met these pastors named Gerald and Linda Sutherland. And I'm telling you, the minute I met them, they were some of the most kind, loving people. They were true pastors. They, I mean, I just had so much respect for them, and I was, a, you know, a just a young girl. But, I mean, I saw something in them that I'd never seen before. But, um, um. Even though I, I live with my, my, my aunt and uncle and they had given me everything, I still had problems with depression and because I was still, you know, the Bible says flee youth, youthful lust, but I wasn't fleeing them. And it was really causing me to have, a, you know, a, a lot of struggles. So I was having, you know, suicidal thoughts. And one Sunday we went to church at Jordan Linda's church and they made in it and they said this would anybody like to come up and get any prayer and so i just went forward in a line to get some prayer and when i got in that line people came out and they began to pray strong for me and they began everything that was going on with me all the torment all that sadness that was going on they were praying and they were asking jesus to set me free from that and all of that left me i mean i cannot explain what happened to me I was no longer sad. I was so happy. And, and those things have never come back to me again. And, but unfortunately, I didn't totally go all the way and really surrender my life to God. I went off to college and um, I, God, I still wasn't fleeing youthful lust. And um, I came home from college and uh, Jordan Linda had become affiliated, had met Sam and Jane. Whaley, somewhere in here, and had learned, had been visiting the Word of Faith Fellowship. So they told me that there was going to be a seminar at the Word of Faith Fellowship and asked what I like to go. So at this point, I was about 19, um, 18 or 19, and so I, I was very excited. I wanted to go. And when I went to the Word of Faith, and I walked in and I saw, I mean, there were so many young people in the church. I mean, young people my age, and they were serving God with their whole hearts. They were praising God with their whole hearts. And I had never seen anything like that, and I so wanted it. That's what I always longed for, just to have true friends that would, that would you know, help you. And so God spoke to my heart, you know, that I, I, it was the will of God for me to... Um, go to Bible school and so and, and I obeyed that very excitedly and so I moved to Bible school and um, when I was there that's when I met James and um, we became very close friends and he was such a sweet young man and we were married and um, then in um, 2000 um, I became pregnant with our with our first child Joy Lynn and just to touch back on those friendships um, as I was in my pregnancy, I was really, I was having some struggles, but I had friends and Robin Webster, who is um, Sam and Jane's daughter, she would go to doctor's appointments with me. She would travel all these places and I never had to go through those things alone. And she was always there to pray for me and my other friends would pray for me and encourage me. And it was very serious for my daughter's life. And if, um, and if she had not, you know, if we had not even been praying for her before she was born, she would not have survived. She began to stop growing. Um, she had what they call inner uterine growth restriction. And so she stopped growing. And um, 
eventually they they had to um, go ahead and take her so that she could she could survive and Robin and and, and Jane were right there with me and um, there was you know it was very serious I um, I needed people with me and James Joy Lynn when she was born she was going to have a whole medical team of uh, doctors that were going to be right there to to take care of her and she was going to even have to get taken from the delivery room to another part of the hospital and James you know was going to would need to be with her and so Robin was right there with me holding my hand and grandmother would Jane, which is what we call her, was right there with James holding his hand and we didn't have to walk through that alone. And one other thing that I wanted to add was when, when I was a little girl and my, um, my, my adopted parents, they would give me uh, scriptures and one of the scriptures that they gave me was, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so that was the basis of even where we got her name from and, and and we've seen that the joy of the Lord has been our strength has been our stronghold and you know we both had that those places where that sadness and that depression but God you know he delivered us from that and he he, he taught us to pray even before she was born so naturally when she was born and you know they they tell you all these medical things because she did have um, because she was born at 28 weeks and she weighed two pounds and one ounce, which is a very low birth weight um, baby and very, very, very premature baby. Um, there was, um, it affected her body in many ways. And so she had m uh, many mild deficiencies in a lot of areas. You know, she did end up having, she, you know, she had a hard time breathing, a hard time swallowing. So we had a lot of battles that we had to overcome, but, one thing that was that she knew was we all she prayed and one of the things that we faced with joy was she would have um episodes where she would pass out you know she could be sitting around and eating or you know when she's a little older and walking or whatever and just playing having a great day she would just pass out and like lose consciousness so one day she was at church and this happened and as we were, you know, getting her, getting everything gathered together to get her to seek some medical attention, the whole church was there this time. And the whole congregation prayed, strong prayer, and prayed and cried out to God. And that attack of her passing out, it never happened again. It never happened again. And so she learned, as even as she was a, a small child and she would feel things going on with her, you would, you would hear her saying, help the baby Jesus, help the baby Jesus. I mean, and she learned to pray. And there was one instance in particular when she was 10 years old, she was really having a, a, a lot of struggles that year. There were a lot of things physically going on with her body and um, she had um, her digestive system had kind of shut down and she was having swelling in various parts of her bodies and all of this was unexplained. We didn't really know what was going on so she was um, put in the hospital and she was having to go through a very painful um, uncomfortable procedure and she just stopped and she began with all her heart to cry out to Jesus and she said Jesus your will for my life Jesus your will for my life Jesus I mean she prayed that from the core of her being I mean it rung throughout the quarters of that hospital and those nurses that were in the room, I mean, they, they were just astonished. And they said they had never heard a child pray like that before. And, you know, it was such a miracle. And during that time, one um, highlight of, of that, that time of her being in the hospital was um, grandmother came and she brought along her grandson, Brock and Mark, your daughter, Elizabeth, mm -hmm. they came to visit right. her in the hospital and they sang to this her. This is a Pastor Jane Willie. Okay. Yes, and they, they sang to her and prayed for her. And I mean, she was really, I mean, uh, just, I mean, really having a hard time. I was very responding, very little. I mean, within hours, she was up, she was eating, 
she was playing. And they were like, this little girl is playing. She needs to go home. And so, I mean, it was such a miracle, God's power. And that's what she learned. And she cried out for God's will. And God sent a minister to her and sent her friends to her, which is exactly what she but her, her dad and I have learned throughout the years, we need the, the ministers in our life, the prayer in our life, and how good God has been to us. And yeah, she, how old is she? Um, Joy Lynn is now uh, 15 years old, and she's in the 11th grade. And um, every time we go to a, a doctor's appointment, they, they, they look and they're just marveled at the progress that she's made. Because um, many of the, pro the, the the things that they were saying about her, um, that you know she was going to really have to have, a, she had a feeding tube when she was very young, and that that feeding tube was going to be in her for years and years and years, where there's no feeding tube. That's great. And you know, and and she does, she has some hearing impairment, and she plays the piano beautifully, and and sings beautifully, and learns, and she's she's just a miracle. And one in one doctor's appointment. You know, we had to fill out some things and tell the medical history. And this doctor walked in and he said, when I came in here, I really expected to see a very sick little girl. He says, I I'm just amazed at, at, at how, how, you know, how she is, how far she's come. And it really is just nothing but a testimony of the power of God and the, and the prayer. It really is a miracle, and I I have seen firsthand Joy Lynn and and what a miracle it's been. I remember when she was born. I remember uh, the church praying all together for her, and and I even remember that one service you're talking about where she was uh, passed out, and you guys were getting ready to take her to the hospital, and the whole church prayed, and I remember that God healing her, and uh, it's just so wonderful to have a church family, isn't it? That it really we can is. turn to and. So, so both of you have been at the Word of Faith for a long time. James has been here a real long time. You were here yeah. all the way in the 80s. And uh, so you, both of you have obviously heard a lot of the attacks that have been at the church, all these false allegations. Uh, James, I'll just start with you. Just, you know, what would you tell the listeners? Uh, there's been so much out there uh, that's been some negative allegations by people uh, against the church. Uh, and just share... Uh, as you've heard these things, what your response is? Well, I've been in, uh, in the Word of Faith for over 30 years. Uh, I've always felt the love of God in that church. I've always felt the love of God from Sam and Jane Whaley. Um, I've never been a part of abuse. Uh, I've never seen, you know, Sam and Jane Whaley physically or verbally, verbally abuse anyone. And uh, Sam and Jane's heart is... It's to love God, and, you know, they want us to hear the voice of God and obey, fulfill the call of God on our life, and and make it to heaven. And that's the heart of Sam and Jane Whaley. I've never seen any abuse at the Word of Faith Fellowship. And, James, you were sharing about uh, working for Jane Whaley's father, uh, Bill Brock, when he was plumbing for years and years, and... Uh, we were talking earlier about how he made you feel a part of the family. He'd introduce you. Just tell a minute about that. You know, you're you're a different skin color than than <laughs> Bill and his family. But uh, uh, and I know Bill uh, Brock had a lot of his grandsons, his his grandsons working with him, and you'd be part of the family going around there, traveling with them, doing all the work. But uh, you know. One thing that we see at our church is it really doesn't matter about what color of skin you are. You know, as our pastor says, God made all the colors for beauty. And uh, so, uh, but just tell them just a little bit about what you were sharing with me earlier about that. Okay. Um, there was one day we were working on the job and the building contractor, uh, he came on the job and uh, Bill, he said, uh, let, her, let me introduce you to my family. This is my son, Kenneth. This is my grandson, Kevin. This is my grandson, Carrie, and this is my other grandson, James. He's the black sheep of the family. <laughs> and we had a very close relationship. We love, you know, being with each other, love working with each other. And, you know, like I've said before, he treated me just like I was his own son, and his skin color didn't matter to either one of us. And you mentioned uh, when when Joy Lynn was sick in the hospital. I think you were telling me a little bit about that. That was close to the time I, I remember when Bill was was going to pass away. 
uh, and Joylin was in the hospital. Uh, and I think you mentioned, was he able to come and see her yes. before he passed away? Yes. Um, so one day, uh, uh, Sam and Jane, uh, Robin, their daughter, uh, Aunt Corrine, which is Blanche's sister, uh, they brought Bill up to, we were in Asheville, okay. to the hospital in Asheville. And uh, Joy, uh, he got to meet Joy for the first time. And, uh, she was in an incubator. She was in an incubator, and uh, he prayed. He prayed for her. And uh, me and him, were, we were in this small room, maybe like a dozen, half a dozen other babies. And uh, we were laughing, we were crying. And uh, little Joy Lynn, she was laying on her stomach. She pressed herself up and flipped herself over. And when she did that, we just cried. We just wept. I mean, we had so much joy. I mean, that really, truly touched his heart. I mean, the love of God, the anointing of God was in that room. And that really blessed him so much that he got to see his grandbaby before he left, before he left this world. That is so precious. And Trina, share just a little bit. You've been here for a long time, too. You actually teach in the Word of Faith Christian School. And so you've heard some of these uh, accusations against the church. Will you share a little bit for the listeners? Uh, yes, I am. Um, I just want to say that, you know, Sam and Jane and Robin and Frank, they are some of the sweetest, most kind, gentle people. And Jane Whaley has always taught us that children are a blessing from God. Every time we have a baby dedication, she, she tells us that children are a blessing, they're a heritage from God, and it's our responsibility to love them and to raise them up in the call of God that's on their life and rear them in tenderness. And, you know, I, she, they, they've been such an e example to me. And Robin and Brock, the fruit of, of the, and Frank, they are so sweet, and they're the fruit of being raised by Sam and Jane, they're the sweetest people and the most loving people. And in our lives, you know, there were times we had financial um, difficulties and we've heard about um, even, you know, the medical difficulties and they were always there for, for us. I mean, there was times, I mean, Robin pulled her own purse out to give me money for things that I needed. And I mean, and I feel so close to them. I, I would tell, I, 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 I love grandmother and I, and, and she's like one of my best friends. I want her to, uh, anything going on in my life, I want her to pray for me and, and, you know, and just be a part of what God's doing in my life. And she's always been willing to do that. And Papa Sam has been willing to do that. And we didn't share that. James and I actually have another child. I mean, you mentioned him, Martin. I was 43 when Martin was born and James was 49. And our son, he's so happy and he loves them. He loves his Papa Sam and he loves his Grandma Jane. And, and you know, and our children are so happy and so sweet and it's just wonderful being there and wonderful seeing all the children that God has blessed our church with. And it is so good, as you were sharing, I was just thinking about being a part of the family of God. You know, the Bible talks about when you're a part of the family of God, God joins you together. And the Bible talks about even closer than, than a brother and sister. When, when God joins you together, uh, he does it for eternity. And uh, as, as you were sharing, I was just thinking about the love of God. When you're a part of the family of God, how you are surrounded by brothers and sisters and people in your life who, who there's so much love there that everybody just lays down everything for each other. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what you've shared, how God has touched your life because of the people of God that God has put in your life. And you know, the, the, the real reason why we all do that is because Jesus has touched our lives. And when Jesus touches your life, you feel so much love in your heart that it's all you can do is to just love each other. You know, and, and I have seen that, and as you were sharing, we've seen that in our church because, you know, our church has been really so touched by the love of God. And you've heard, uh, listeners, you've heard so much now from uh, months of us sharing how Jesus has come into our hearts. And we felt the love of God. And when God's love comes to our hearts, it's all you can do is to just love each other. And as James and Trina were sharing, they felt that love when they went through all their struggles with Joy Lynn and different things. And, and James first came into the church and he felt the love of God. 
it's because it's real and it's because Jesus really does love all of us and he wants us to feel that love and he wants us to have love for each other so that was so precious how you share it about God's love that has come to both of you for years and years so we want to thank you again this has been Word of Faith Responds and it's been just another great day sharing with you about Jesus go to our website it's wordoffaithfellowship.org you will see many other testimonies uh, from the radio programs we've had in the past uh, we hope that you will tune in with us again we, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, 8.30 to 9. Thank you very much.